have you ever wanted to write a novel before, but don't know where to start? Uh, afraid you'll make a million mistakes, everyone's made before, and you'll end up scrapping the whole thing before you've even started? Well, have no fear, because now you can learn from my mistakes instead. Today, we're going to be covering everything I learned writing my first novel, so that hopefully you can write something better than I did when I first attempted this with very little knowledge going into it. I think everyone wants to write a novel at some point in their lives, or a book of some kind, or about whatever they're passionate about, but no one really knows how to start, the task seems incredibly daunting, and there's such a steep learning curve that it's off-putting to even write the first chapter. I know I discovered that dream for myself last year, and that's why I decided to write one for myself. This is what I learned. Now, a bit of background first on what my novel actually was. Uh, I came into it fantasy and at the end of 2020 I really discovered that this is what I wanted to do but apart from being inspired by you know the worlds of the Wheel of Time and Rosha and the Stormlight Archive I had very little knowledge about what I wanted to do but what I did know is what I loved about fantasy was magic so that's where I started so I came up with this idea of a magic system based around nature I took inspiration from Mistborn and keeping something fast paced whilst combining it with something that's traditionally seen as druid and old fashioned nature magic. I created a tree, one only one of its kind in the centre of the grandest city in the world. Whoever eats it gained magical powers able to bend the very essence in all living things. Now this was passed down genetically and from this I was able to do a load of different things with my world and honestly the magic system was the thing I was most proud of in the world. Anyways, with that out of the way, uh, six months passed, 200,000 words later, and I had my finished first draft. Now, I'm going to go into the bigger, more obvious points first, because that is going to be what's going to be most generally applicable to whoever's watching. And after that, I'm going to move away over to more of the more minute, smaller details that you won't be taught in any creative writing course that are actually going to help you finish a novel for the first time. Stick around to the end of the video to see those. The most important thing I learned as a fantasy writer specifically is to not get too bogged down in world building. It's really easy reading some of the best worlds of all time, whether that's Mistborn, Middle Earth, Roshar, Randland from the Wheel of Time, wherever else, and just get obsessed with your magic, your kingdoms, your names, all this stuff, the fauna, which is all really interesting, but at the end of the day, if you haven't populated that with interesting characters and a gripping plot, readers simply aren't going to want to turn the pages. This was a problem I had because I focused so much on creating a world that I was still, to this day, really proud of, but didn't put the same effort in in creating compelling characters or a gripping plot that challenged them the whole way through the book. I had maybe an idea of where I wanted them to be at the start, and an idea of where I wanted them to be at the end, and very little as to how I was going to get them from A to B. I went, I made it up completely as I went along, and discovery writing is valid for some people, but I will say, if you're doing fantasy and sci-fi, you definitely want to have at least a rough plan for the whole book, else you are going to be completely lost and have no idea what your characters should be doing, especially if you have multiple protagonists, as I did, who need to be interacting with each other throughout the whole book as the plots of different characters go closer together. This isn't to say you should ignore world building either. One of the most important things you can do is take one central point. Now I got this from Brandon Sanderson's creative writing course for fantasy. And the thing he says is take one thing about the world. So whether it's the magic, the weather, the nature, whatever it may be. Good examples of this, look at Brandon Sanderson's books himself. He takes the weather. In Mistborn, you've got the mist and the ashy rain that is constantly coming down. In Stormlight Archive, in Roshar, you have the high storm, the worldwide storm that tears buildings apart. What Brandon Sanderson does in these books is he takes one central concept, in this case the weather, and he bases the entire world building around it. He looks at how houses are built to sustain this, how people react to the weather, what does religion think of this, how does this affect the animals and wildlife on the planet, Looking at all these different details relating to one or two central points allows you to create a very rich world without having to give a lecture course 
to your reader on what the world actually is. This is a problem with older books such as Lord of the Rings, which have such a detailed history that it's very difficult to communicate it all to the reader in a way that isn't at times boring. Now it is great to have a world where you've thought of every tiny little thing, but if you just go for that jack of all trades approach where you try to throw all that information at the reader, it's going to bore them and it's going to come across as you haven't properly given enough effort into the world, even though you've given more. By doing less and refining a few points to a T, you are going to come across like you've done a lot more thinking about this world and how it is lived in. Now, speaking of characters living in this world, the most important thing you can focus on is your characters. Once you've got a good idea of what your world looks like, you really want to focus on these people. Not just your protagonist, but also your antagonist, your allies, your enemies, everyone. Because every character in that book thinks they are the protagonist. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now, they don't all need to be as detailed as others, but they all need to have individual quirks, ideas, hopes, dreams, ways of living that are believable. You want to give these characters for the protagonists and the main characters defining flaws. So what is a defining flaw? Well, Will Storr in The Science of Storytelling tells us that a defining flaw is a single defining character trait that is fundamentally flawed that defines their entire behavior. Similarly to the world building, we're not thinking of every single thing about this character. We're thinking of one thing they have fundamentally got wrong about their entire life and how that alters all of their behavior. Great examples of this are Caledon Stormblessed from the Stormlight Archive, who is obsessed with his idea of saving his friends, even though he knows deep down he can't save everyone. Or Matt Cawthon from The Wheel of Time, who is obsessed with his this idea of not being a lord, despite all of his actions being one of a lord and a hero. These are great character flaws because you can think of everything from their behavior to what has caused it, to how the plot can challenge them to change to create an interesting story. One of the problems I had with my characters was that I had vaguely defined ideas of what was wrong with them and vague explanations of why they were like that, but I didn't have very clearly defined problems and places where I wanted them to resolve to. This meant that when I came to creating my plot, I didn't have a great idea as to how I was going to create scenarios that were going to challenge them and push them to change because that is what makes stories fundamentally interesting. Seeing characters change, human evolution. A very important point I learned was that middle points in books are very hard. Now, what do I mean by this? The thing is, is that you can give your characters an end goal in sight, defeat the Dark Lord, slay the dragon, whatever it is, it is a great thing. But midway through the book, 30,000 words in, they're nowhere close to slaying the dragon, but they are also completely away from where they started. So the challenge is this, how do you create interesting narratives that are for the most part detached from the end goal and where they started? The thing you need to consider is sub goals. Now what are sub goals? In Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, the characters intend to rob the Lord Ruler. Now they don't just write rob the ro Lord Ruler and leave it there, they write sub goals. These are the different things we need to do to achieve this goal. You need to think the same for your characters. What are things they need to do to finish the final goal? So, slay the Dark Lord. Don't just make it slay the Dark Lord. What do they need to slay the Dark Lord? Maybe they need a magic weapon or to learn a secret power. So they need to go off on this separate task. They need to find a sacred book that tells them the history that they need to know. These are sub goals you can give your characters that are well defined that give them other things to work towards. This means that in any one scene in the middle you can have them doing interesting things even if it is something as simple as gambling. In a book I'm reading at the moment called The Shadow of What Was Lost, two of the main characters need money about 100 pages in. They're completely away from where they started, they're in a different country and they're heading towards another different country. So they need money to get there. This is detached from their end goal, but they need this stuff to survive. So there is an entire chapter where they use their secret magical ability to tell if someone is lying, to play gambling and win at it. This creates dialogue, interesting dynamics between different characters, and gives us a very 
gripping scene without needing to be related to directly reaching their final destination. This allows you to get interesting middle points and it's something that I wish I knew when I started. Now with that stuff out of the way, I want to focus on some of the more minute points. One of the first things I can say that by far will help you more than almost any other thing in this book is have a referral sheet. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that you need to have a separate Word document that is very brief but has every character's name, every name you've made up, every swear word, every magical ability, every religious figure and building, anything that you need to refer back to, you can have it right next to you because you are going to forget characters' names. You are going to forget what they're capable of, why they fight the way they do, what they believe in. And having a quick referral sheet so you can quickly check, oh, this character, Arba, is the prince who believes in this because his mother died when he was a child in front of him because of magic. That allows you to quickly check something, get the name, put it back in and get back to writing because writing a book that is even 100,000 words, let alone 200,000 words, is ages of work. You don't want to be wasting hours of your time having to go back through control effing through your entire Word document to find that one name that you wrote twice just to get it back in again and maybe even spell it wrong. You want to have a clear referral sheet so your revisions are much easier. This is the second thing you need to remember. Your first draft of your first book is going to suck. It is going to be very bad because you don't know a lot about writing. And no matter how much research you've done, like I did, before you start, you are going to make a load of big errors. So you need to accept this and persevere because if you want to publish a book, you need to first write a bad book. You need to write a bad book and maybe, maybe if you want to put in enough hours, you can revise it 10 times and get something that's decent. But if you want to write your 10th amazing book, you first need to write your first really bad book. And it's as simple as that. I wish I could tell you there was some other way, but there is virtually no author on the planet who published their first book. In almost all circumstances, it's going to be at least their second. Now, one final thing I want you to remember is that you need to write down everything you like or dislike or want to change as you're going along. Having a very quick list of everything you want to change, how you want to complete these character arcs on your second revision, is going to really speed up your revision process coming into your drafts. Now, if you want to publish a book, you do need to do lots of drafts. It's as simple as that. I'm working on that point at the moment and it is very difficult because you want to create something new and better, but you're gonna keep on writing first drafts. So you need to persevere. You need to understand that revising is a crucial part of the writing process. So if you know that, you need to make it easier for yourself by writing down everything wrong that you want to change. And also if you can, give it to a family member or a friend who's willing to read it and give you constructive criticism because you are going to treat this thing like your baby. We're gonna to want to have someone else review this honestly and criticize it so you can see all your own flaws in your own work so that you can improve. Because that is how you're gonna become a better writer. That's how you're gonna write an amazing book. And I know you can do it. And one last tip, I do recommend you write an elevator pitch quick synopsis like you would have on the back of your book so that when anyone asks, because they are going to ask, what's your book about Matt? Well you can tell them. I hope you like this video guys, I've put more effort into this one, I'm trying to improve and I really hope you guys can give me some feedback on how I can do better. For that you'll need to subscribe, like, comment and let me know what I could do better. And if you could share this with a friend you think is thinking about writing a novel or would appreciate this, I would really appreciate it because I, if I can just help one of you guys fix even a few of your mistakes in your writing, then, well, I've done my job there. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope I will see you guys next week for the next video. Have a lovely night, guys. Bye-bye.